very clever having the audio muted in the beginning. Welcome everyone to another DIY FPGA Risk 5 and audio live stream. And the 12 megabyte of audio so long. Enough for an intro, although slightly muted at the beginning. Should also get, still get our OPL synthesis. This is all what we had previously on the icebreaker. Just our regular full test of previously implemented stuff. Now fully working, fully finished on the Radioana ULX3S, coming soon I heard to crowd supply maybe in a month or so. And in the previous videos, which by the way I hope now that I have unmuted this audio is fine and stuff. In the previous videos we first uh, got this all working on the icebreaker and uh, then with this new board that we got here um, previous videos, ULX3S, we had to get all the stuff working to, again. And uh, certainly now we have the most complete system also with HDMI general, not HDMI general purpose differential uh, IO stuff. And uh, as you see uh, previously from the Radiana, from the original authors example, we had here the very small firmware of their minimal port of PicoSoc. Now we have our full from previous icebreaker videos, our full firmware here. So right now the nearly identical only difference is um, two megabyte offset into the serial prom. And the other difference is this is right now running with hardware instruction for multiple and divide something we didn't have enough logic elements for on the icebreaker on the ICE-40 compared to the ECP-5. And of course this was quite some efforts. Also, we now have previous video where in the previous video it took me way too many hours to get SPI flash working at all. Now I have it running here in quad SPI mode, previous videos. And um, uh, that means that we now have much higher performance. Uh, also the most minimal example from upstream Radiana from the authors of this ULX3S board, um, there it is only running in FPGA, synthesized memory. And this example here is now just what is preferable to us because we have instead of just very tiny kilobytes, we have a whopping 128 megabit, whopping 16 megabyte flash just on the just as on the icebreaker. This is the same wind bond. 16 megabyte flash and for this because if we don't have the quad SPI mode mentioned in the previous video for quad for four times the performance this would be rather slow so it, we would not have any benefit of running 50 or right now I'm actually uh, running this with 40 megahertz because right now the synthesizer is only to 46 or 48 megahertz with all the risk 5 features like multiply, divide, barrel shifter and compressed instruction set enabled and I mostly wanted to test the compressed instruction set. So without the compressed instruction set we synthesize to over 50 megahertz but when we enable compressed instruction for the previous video there of half a year ago here on this channel taking a closer look at the RISC-V instruction set architecture they have this compressed instruction similar to ARM thumb or 
compressed MIPS instruction, where the many common instructions are only 16-bit instead of 13, 16-bit instead of 32-bit in width. And yeah, I wanted to fully test this. This is why right now I'm running with 40 megahertz because here yeah, also most likely, for example, barrel shifter without the barrel shifter. I think with the barrel shifter, it probably takes one like one instruction cycle of which might be like four clock cycles right now, I guess. And without the barrel shifter, a shift could take up to 32 or if you have the fast shift of groups of four, a uh, maximum of probably seven, I guess, instruction cycles multiplied by four clock cycles. So quite a while. So most likely it is probably, perfor the performance is probably better if you probably sometimes have shift, uh, often have shift instructions. So most likely better performance for barrel shifter and yeah. Whether we are in the end run with comp compressed instructions that we have to see, but that you learn something. So um, to my surprise, this quad SPI mode just worked. So the, well, just worked after implementing it. For this, the, the thing we had to learn here is this trellis of trellis reverse engineering the ECP5 bitstream of those lattice ECP5 FPGAs. And for this quad mode, we need to have this possibility to flip those pins on the SPI flash. SPI, Vicky, we can probably should open this again. And in the previous video, I showed you this is using a clock um, master out slave in. And so basically clock chip select and two serial of one input, one output serial line. However, the newer SPI peripherals usually support dual or quad. And in dual, these two lines become bidirectional. Bidirectional, uh, do the FU3 via serial buses as bidirectional data line slave out. Uh, hello. Ah, oh, here's dual SPI. So when dual SPI reuses the existing serial lines, uh, quad SPI adds two more IO lines, SIO2 and SIO3 to send four data bits at a time. So basically doubling and quadrupling this. And for this to work, we need to be able to switch those data lines between input and output. And as usual, as per the previous video, this was in, included in the previous eight hours Googling and researching the stuff. So very hard to find, very few examples use this. Um, so what this is doing is synthesizing here, declaring to use as an XPNR that we want this data lines, this flash, mosi, meso, and white protect or something and hold, uh, or hold not, those four lines going to this flash, uh, SPI flash, to have be di bidirectional. So as per the previous video, the small thing sometimes takes the longest. And um, yeah, so trellis IO, parameter here direction bidirectional. For this again we have some tree state thing. This is our flash IO output enable coming here from the um, SPI memory map, mapped IO module from PicoSoc already. And then what is this fancy dot B I O T this is the pin here. So these are the the pins on the board and then the, uh, then the inputs and outputs. So we have here the input here reversed of, these are the outputs of the uh, SPI MMIO and vice versa here. So the, either the, the input of the tree state, output buffer, and um, yeah, wiring this up to the IO of our SPI memory mapped IO um, SPI module and then the tree state control here being the flash output enable and because this is reversed so this is tree state um, when not output enable for the inputs to be able to um, receive inputs and, and not be driven by our output and um, so yeah this is uh, among the eight hours and surprisingly like this uh, I kid you not this worked on the first try so sometimes even us professionals are lucky. Um, what however did not work on the first try is that um, it was hanging um, and or actually so this was working 
um, so far so good. And then I started to migrate to the full firmware and the full firmware, like our well, full proof of concept drafting microprocessor firmware here um, was hanging and that took another hour to find. So again, the next hour spent. Um, so why was this hanging? This was a little bit hard to debug. So our full firmware is this here, of course, as per previous icebreaker fame, of course, right now we have here um, a little bit uncomfortable 14 megabyte of PCM coded audio data in there. But um, so the, the symptoms was the stuff was coming up. It was printing out here the welcome, um, press enter to continue here. It was pressing this, but after two of two printouts of this, it was hanging. So, so far, so good. Our enablement, of course, having the, all the source code edits, of course, it doesn't work magically. I had to change the mic make file, had to change the sections, had to change the startup assembly to be the same for the icebreaker. So basically just reversing there are some if devs here of start up as um, removing the if dev that I've just previously added there. So, um, so re reversing, <laughs> reverting our own work um, for this SPI stuff here to be here some global flash IO worker assembly stuff. And um, so it started to work. It printed out two times this press enter to continue and this took forever to actually find. And um, it, this was because I thought that is this some risk five thing is but the, I added so the re, the way I tracked this earlier today was I added more code so basically I added here for example the command R right you see this already um, yeah so for example here I added the mem test and the benchmark here to that and this kept running so and then I even added the whole audio output here to command also here re read this which I hope. Yeah, it probably takes a while to reread this. So basically, I added more stuff like the usual printf style of, yeah, you could also define your JTAG interface and JTAG your own RISC-V core. But um, yeah, this was a little bit of a fail of all the Vim versus Emacs, at least Vim pretty print highlights this 14 megabyte of, actually it's more than 14 megabyte, 14 megabyte raw PCM data, um, Two, so this is four times larger, so it's actually a hundred megabyte file for having 16-bit printed as hex and that with zero x hex prefix and comma and stuff. Anyway, so yeah, but I will. I'm sure this will soon finish. So the first thing was, um, yeah, printf style debugging just adds some more stuff and wondering like why the heck does all of this stuff work? Just not the serial output hangs after two rounds. And um, yeah, welcome everyone also. Um, yeah, probably I need a uh, questions audience FPGA peer, uh, playlist. Probably I need to um, have a playlist for this also can cycles to the next buffer. Can we also now yeah. um, while we wait for X Emacs to pretty princess. Um, how much would read and write setup effect code running on the risk five? What do you mean? with that read write setup um, you mean the SPI so because we run from the like in place code uh, XIP in in place execution um, this affects the risk 5 performance drastically so be because unless we copy this to memory if we would maybe do in a later homebrew setup of our card goodness here um, also, did this finish now or uh, um, so running the flash over four times faster um, makes our risk five core four times faster. We have seen this in the icebreaker videos without the quad SPI mode. Our audio was totally slow, for example. So here also can we are ah, now we finished. Good. Yeah. So anyway. Um, so it turned out, so debugging this, um, so it, I concluded after adding here, for example, actually I wanted to type it. So I even added here the audio stuff um, of, of this audio command duck here of our audio output command. Even that worked. So this was for me conclusion, the whole SOC, the whole RISC-V core, everything worked perfectly. And I turned my eye to this get char prompt thing here. And it turned out 
Um, I also had to debug printf because again, we don't have an operating system. We design our own hardware or even our own CPU and system on chip video audio stuff here. So it could be everything. Actually, initially I thought maybe it's my video VGA output and I commented in put char, um, commented here the VGA printout out here, but that didn't change something because initially I thought maybe my video mode, video memory VRAM access was um, was uh, hanging. But so then with printf I professional debugging the sketcher prompt. First I thought it's like cycle counting overflow stuff but that also didn't turn out to be the case. And in the end it was, uh, you will not believe, lo and behold, it was this RGB LED. So here yeah, RGB, let's what it's worse. And so this line was hanging and this also, this is why it happened on the second second loop of this because initially we booted up this, the cycle count was pretty low and we did not toggle here the LED. So this line is, this code line is toggling the LEDs of from all bits on to all bits or what, whatever bit pattern. Yeah, actually we had here all bits on here from this line. So uh, then I looked into actually the very, very log for this. Uh, also lesson learned, um, if something hangs exactly at the second time, then the, the issue probably is just in front of your eyes here for this stuff. And it turns out that they had modified of this most minimal ULX3S example from Ray Diana of the team there. They had modified here this that, so first of all, they from the PicoSock, so in the original PicoSock icebreaker example, the LED you could read and write as you see the, the matching firmware, this was working. And those, and yeah, le lesson learned also for you, maybe, maybe for your example projects, do not unnecessarily delete random stuff. The next person might spend an hour or two debugging why the heck it doesn't work anymore. And so it turned out they had this code in here. And um, I, I commented this out. So this, so they only triggered like matched this very low logic comparison stuff. If there was something to the LED to write. This is why reading wasn't working. So reading was stalling our CPU core because this IO, this memory map IO access would never finish. Um, and yeah, it's, so this was mostly a matter of just commenting this out. Of course, I delete this now be, because this code does, doesn't make sense for us. And the second thing, it also didn't have the code to ac actually read and assign this buffer, this, this buffered values of the LED of the general purpose IO. So this code, I also added here is this code, this line um, as previously it was there an icebreaker anyway. So yeah, this was the first thing, but um, this was still not all. Later I found, so this fixed the hang, so then I could boot and this menu worked, but I noticed another thing. So when I was doing here my VGA stuff of moving the cursor, you see here cursor, uh, printout stuff changing um, here and this was returning some random garbage and also other stuff like graphic mode toggling here with this also didn't work which resulted in my text mode versus graphic mode testing this also didn't work and then I first thought I changed something in my graphic mode code which is of course this one here VGA very log I was also editing around here and like did I recently change something? Why does it not work anymore? And yeah, another 30 minutes learned, not, not wasted, learned. Um, again, the same situation of maybe do not edit code away because this was also working in the original PicoSock example. And somehow I have no idea why, maybe, somehow maybe they wanted, I, I don't really quite understand why, because on the icebreaker, I would understand you would want to save each and every logic element, but on this 80 or 10, 12,000 or 84,000 logic cell example, you don't really need to count here each and every logic element like this. So they had removed this IO mem, if IO mem, IO memory mapped IO valid and ready, like addressed and, and data flip-flop buffer stored ready, um, very log assignment here. They have deleted that. So this took me another 30 minutes to find. And this was why 
um, reading the LED or our cursor, any, any of our I.O. stuff wouldn't work. So that is here the next thing they had deleted. So yeah, maybe if you do examples, maybe do not randomly de delete too much. The next person it could easily, well, for me, it took like 30 minutes here and another beginner with this stuff could easily spend a whole day or something or a whole weekend of, of scratching their head and wondering what the heck is going on there. And also lesson learned, read each code, follow each assignment. Sooner or later, you will find um, what is going wrong there. Um, so yeah, now we can delete this explanation marks here and this code here. Um, another tip for you that you learn also something else in the VGA stuff. I debugging through this, I um, changed the VGA code here a little bit. Um, on the icebreaker, I was running out of logic elements and to one, one thing we probably could optimize here is, for example, for the icebreaker, where we really need to count each and every logic element now with, with all the fancy very log audio and video code we have done here, is here this assignments of uh, data, for example, this. So previously I had here, because our I.O. bus is 32 bits, I previously had here something, I think like this, like all bits is assign here all bits of like 31 bits zero and then the text mode, text versus graphic mode bit. And this probably unnecessarily wastes quite some logic elements for no good reason. So what this is doing is like making sure all the bits are zero initialized because our text versus graphic mode thing is only or was previously only one bit to, to flip between text and graphic mode. And so if you are short in logic elements, like on the icebreaker or other designs, or even if you have 84,000 and you at the end you miss some logic elements, then you don't need to assign all those bits here. You could like declare like YOLO, whatever, and treat the, the topmost, the most significant bits as random garbage. It's like, yeah, whatever was in there. Um, you only need to document this for your software people. Like, yeah, um, all the top bits are like reserved, like, yeah, whatever, YOLO. Um, and this only these bits are like valid for parameter. Um, now the GFX mode here, previously the GFX mode was one bit. Now I made it already three bits for um, graphic mode. So now we have more memory. So next we will have fancy 8-bit or maybe even true color. We will see. So yeah, just assign the, the same goes for the cursor. So the cursor previously I had here the same 16 bits of zero and then the cursor X, but yeah, YOLO, whatever. Uh, just tell the software guys, don't look at the high bits. They are reserved of random garbage right now. And yeah, so most likely I've not yet tested this, but I'm pretty confident, like 99.9999% sure. This will save a handful of logic elements. And uh, yeah, so I changed already all those assignments here um, in the VGA core. Um, so yeah, let's see. Christian says, good to know, SPI flash. Couldn't be me doing stuff incorrectly, but they were always being kind of iffy with small random reads, writes to me much faster once the transfer is going. Um, yeah, this depends how you address this. As per the previous video yesterday, they have continuous read. So as per yesterday's video for this SPI details, you can read the whole entire like 128 mbit of flash goodness with one read, so one address, uh, like address zero, and then continuously clocked read, read the whole flash. This is one thing, so each time you um, stop the continuous read and send an address, of course, you waste 32 bits plus, or 32, 24 or something bits plus whatever um, addressing uh, bits of, of addressing bits going out. And of course, the dual and quad SPI are two and four times as fast for transferring more. Um, so that's the summary for this. Again, um, so the, the next thing is, of course, SD. So this, this nice board has SD. We could even certainly attach SD to the 
um, SD card to the icebreaker another day um, as a PMOD making this because certainly it's most convenient to load software you homebrew a card stuff from the SD card so that comes next this also can be used with SPI or some SD mode um, probably I will start with SPI just for the test of it and then later as usual just get the basics working and then so for me so we have video of course we can always make it higher resolution higher bit depths uh, we have audio which maybe at the end of this live stream maybe we make it stereo just for the fun of it and um, yeah then another day just for the total fun of it this here has a four pin trrs connector like modern smartphones we can make this fourth or this yeah this the second ring we can make it as PDIF digital audio just for our audio for goodness this is coming next here but of course for you to play along at home um, homebrew system coming along nicely and certainly with this board probably in a month I heard maybe in a month this is going to crowd supply um, until then probably we, uh, we, have, we will have probably a really nice graphic system going here with Pac-Man and, and some Starship shooting stuff um, leave me in the comments below what you like um, and what you learn or what you like to see so most likely we will make some Tetris and Pac-Man clone here live on this channel um, and probably as I, I teased it already I'm personally what do we do here in our hobby channel here of um, our passion of low level bits and pieces most likely after some low hanging Pac-Man like of something fruit for you to have something to see uh, also we need to have keyboard and mouse right but after this most likely I will try to make some 3D shooting stuff of X-Wing versus TIE Fighter kind of probably um, also for PC retro stuff of all the fun projects here o over the year certainly not tomorrow but over the year maybe we write some little 3D shooting stuff and not only hardware isolated on the S3 Verge but maybe something that also runs on this one but yeah all the bits and pieces to get going and of course our micro kernel certainly our micro kernel more more interesting or more important than our starship shooting stuff maybe until christmas we finish some star wars shooting thing but um yeah this these are the things to get going here with this board and maybe to finish this that you see some live code stuff and as usual you can also ask questions here and um, all the fun stuff also to reiterate so we will have for this rx so rx32 i call him my homebrew project for 32-bit modern uh, goodness and we will have two flavors we do here the software right other people do the hardware like Aston from one bit squared the icebreaker and uh, those guys here from radiana in uh, um, i think was in uh, zagreb um, this ulx3s and um, maybe however we will do pmod probably for so this of actually if even for this we need a pmod so um, this is pmod compatible so most likely we will do a little bit tiny hardware to have a pmod for ps2 keyboard and maybe we violet it because for the icebreaker we will need an sd card so maybe we will make an sd card pmod for the icebreaker to have the same hardware infrastructure so the the, the whole project of modern 32-bit risk 5 rx32 little for the icebreaker for the ice 40 and rx32 big for this amazing feature rich 32-bit megabyte um, yeah actually this has as much memory as my first pentium and certainly way more memory than my first 386 of my father so yeah amazing system and live now we could add stereo to this which is relatively simple um, also now I have all the cables hanging here uh, cable galore so need to be a little bit careful not to short this nice precious board on USB plugs there um, to do stereo uh, I said this before um, this is relatively simple ULX so we simply need to um, change our audio code here later of course I even need to make the audio code nicer also dedicated video one bit pulse with modulated direct stream digital previous videos if you want to see all this stuff in detail and um, so I, I also need to clean up this code right now this is open coded I should move this into modules uh, Verilog modules and instantiate them um, 
but this is uh, just some yeah like when when we feel like it i prepared this here already and also yeah we also need to but i will do this like this is not the most interesting of modulizing this um, what i mean with this is also having a parameter here for this deck because on the icebreaker on the rx32 dot little system we will only have mono because logic elements and so this audio module should get a parameter whether mono or stereo um, for rx32 little or big and for now we just open code this here so we i mentioned this already in the previous live stream so this is a right side channel of the deck so this is deck next so just this assignment here again for right strides so deck deck two free and then we need to have this deck two times instantiated first or actually right now it's not a module so right now we will just copy it um, so here are our pulse with so here is our yeah this is exactly what i mean this clock divider thing we only need one so and uh, right now we run we run with 40 megahertz um, so clock two this is actually theoretically we only need this clock once right um, oops yeah let's see pvm so we need this this deck bits deck next deck three um, so this things we need twice actually we have it here already twice i probably must have already copy and pasted it previously before i run out of um, deck bits or maybe we only need this also once because this is probably the current the current bit we are pulse with modulating out so then one bit, so here's our PVM2. Oh, it's just not, yeah, always when I press tabs in this fancy very log mode here, shifts this. Another way to save another couple of logic elements, most likely for the icebreaker, is right now we have this here um, 17, uh, 17, why is this? Why do we have two overflow bits? I don't even remember why we have two overflow bits. Should be not only have one. Anyway, um, actually for the icebreaker, we could easily make this instead of a 16-bit deck, only a 15-bit deck. You will most likely not hear the difference anyway with our direct stream digital pulse with modulation here. So it's most likely will free, I don't know, estimate 16 or if we are lucky 20 or something like that logic cells on the ice 40. So PVM here, our pulse with modulating stuff here. Um, and this is also what module parameters are for. Then we could make this deck pulse with modulating a parameter and have it instantiated on the icebreaker with 16 and on the, or 15, whatever you make this parameter, either you make it the pulse with modulating or the deck with. So either 15 or 16 and one bit more on the more fancy ULX3 S. So pulse with modulation 2 and then deck data 18 bit. Good point, really probably should have commented here why we have here two overflow bits. So anyway, um, deck 3 do we have here select and deck 3? Why is here even? When selected and wait for free deck fee for why do we don't really need to wait for that so because there you see you program something and then a month later you realize because this is a FM operator so I probably didn't really uh, we can basically update them always why would I have hmm because now we have two deck freeze anyway. So basically we can make this if selected, then this whole block. And then I slightly wonder, can we have an open coded begin here? Like if, I think we can have this if deck free two, then begin, I think this should compile or synthesize. And if deck free, so because we just deleted this there at the beginning begin so we had this begin already so yeah um oh, because we had this ready always here huh? um, 
ready zero, ready. So the only thing is, yeah, the question is, do we really save something with that? Because now we need to have this ready assignment all over the place. So, mm. yeah, this is always just moving this here. Most maybe this wastes another couple of logic elements, now, but yeah. Let's just do it right now. We have them for the icebreaker. We might need to optimize this again to not waste too much. So OPL operator here, 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 and here ready. And um, do we have, so we also need a new pin, uh, output pin for outputting this here for the analog output. So this would be DSD. We have this here already, DSD2. Again, later parameters for that. DSD2 and then yeah assign this is assigned here already. So this is this all this open coded stuff here. Um, what you're saying, I'll um, just wait a second, we have comments. Um, so FM channels right now they are square waves, but later I will I'm not yet doing sine waves. Um, this would be forbiddably too expensive for the IS-40. Um, my plan is later, but yeah, I run out of, as you see, right now they are square, are they square? Yeah, they are, right now they are square waves, but later um, there will be options. Again, maybe this will only be supported on the RX32 dot big system for IS-40 not having a lot of logic elements. But um, when we do sine waves, we need to do some cheap approximations. So first of all, use the symmetry. So only have a quarter of the sine table there and um, mirror the other ones like mirror and flip this for the other part of the waveform. And even that maybe approximate some of it's just a handful of values and shift this and, and like just some rough approximation. Um, most likely we will also, yeah, don't forget to share, like and subscribe for experimenting with that fun stuff. Um, then uh, another thing, of course, right now, the, because I only added the stereo deck for the right channel um, without the FM operator. So right now, this FM operator, they only, actually, we could theoretically change this. So right now, they only output on the left channel. Um, where do we have this here? Actually, it's also, ah, right, we also need to comment this in. So deck bits 15. Then mix this, by the way, do we have here somehow deck two? Yeah, one complication with this module thing is um, it might be not so easy, which, which is also why I've not yet done this module for, um, this is also deck three two, spotting typos of commented all code. Um, this is also why I've not yet done these modules because sharing here this clock divider and um, FM operator, it's like, yeah, need to think how to uh, do this the most elegant way with uh, modules. Let's see, FM deck next. So this is uh, the two decks. You copy the next FIFO sample and assign this three. Um, And um, yeah, so let's see uh, all the operators take data. Last but not least, we need to assign this here in this. And um, then uh, in this ULX3S module, so DSD. And previously I had this hardwired here, this nice neat little very log trick of having one DSD wire and assigning this to both the um, this audio L. So the thing is on the ULX3S, the audio output is four bits. Um, so you could you could actually, without pulse with modulation, have a re really crude four bit uh, parallel, I think register probably network. Should check this schematic again, but so yeah, right now I've hardwired this to the most significant bit only. It's loud enough anyway. 
um, what do we do with those other bits we will see. Um, I slightly wonder if we can um, to because so we have here the audio V maybe I simply for now have here oh wait a second this is also not the right one um, clock DSD so yeah DSD, DSD and DSD2 Oops. so DSD2 just makes this here um, oh wait a second we don't even need to make this registered now because now it is uh, should this be oh wait a second or maybe we just leave it how it was not sure if it does it come I thought it probably should come out of this registered or not let's see this DSD because it's in the accumulator the carry overflow should be registered already so we don't really need this registered not really sure why I've done this um, so DSD and DSD2 and then we have here left and right that probably should work. The only problem is um, the flashing takes. Let me think. So if we do this now, um, the flashing takes super long because this UJ proxying is not the uh, fastest. Um, to do this, we want to comment out here this flashing of the risk five machine code because this is in flash and only flash the bitstream. So because we have not modified the uh, firmware, we can just leave the firmware unmodified in the flash and not wait here five minutes for this uh, whopping 14 megabyte wave file to flash or 12 megabyte. So listed so replacing memory ah, so this is just but this is just a warning that we had here from inherited from the example so 65 this is in audio 65 let's see what we have there um, go to line 65 uh, also best without some stray age I guess what if I uh, apparently also anyway let's Yeah, okay, fine. Let's save it. Not sure what I also, but not the firmware. Don't want to flash the firmware again. Okay, fine. This looks like it's uh, starting to synthesize. Um, what this will change will be because, so if this works, and by the way, theoretically, we should have simulation for everything, maybe another month. But um, because we have not changed the firmware, this means it should only output so the FM operators we change to always add up to both direct stream digital pulse with modulated audio output there. So the FM operator should come out on both sides, uh, which uh, also, where is my headset? Um, however, the PCM coded stream should now only come out on the left side. And then we can change the firmware, which I will anyway do after the stream, because it, uh, it will flash for five minutes anyway, unless we talk for five or 10 minutes. Let's see how long do we have 45 minutes um, so people what do they write here um, does it pause the right from the risk until the deck is ready for the new word yes so this is this is indeed not optimal however if um, so later we should have some DMA this this I've done this to that the timing is perfect right so um, we have one FIFO, uh, one, one uh, FIFO devs one, so that we always have one PCM outputting right now. It's un otherwise, if you write, if you just write, you would totally throw your samples away. So this is synchronizing the uh, writes. Later, of course, we should ideally, in an ideal word, word um, have uh, some DMA means of direct DMA, uh, direct memory transfer this to the deck indeed a uh, good catch um, and um, let's see what else do you have learning about clock and able it seems to learning about clock and able it's trying to figure out how to remove the faster this clock from the jack core it's people in the comments the audience not sure why it needs both the faster clock and the slower clock enable throughput um, 
something about forgotten right an audio driver for the handheld no FIFO no demo no nothing fun times um, learning some are we still synthesizing here are we are programming already I hope don't tell me I forget to don't tell me this is Why do we so much to? Did I comment the wrong line out or? Ah, I commented the wrong line out. Ah, I can't even mix this stuff up. Okay, now this is an issue. Now, unfortunately, so okay, now we can also modify the firmware again. The problem is it's erasing first. So now we have all the area where the risk five code lives already erased to all bits set to FFFF. So that is. Yeah, exactly what I wanted to avoid. So then we can also, um, so the issue is how did I do this last time? So um, there's our firmware, so to make our firmware stereo, we of course need to uh, deck command, so command deck. And he, so this is just copying the data and we can simply, we have our audio file here. Just embedded in the yeah, not amazing. This is also why this took so long to pretty print. Um, of course, stereo is usually interleaved, like left, right, left, right. So we can just embed other audio data and in this loop um, write to both of those deck memory mapped IO positions. Um, so that would be deck one and have this here like. Um, yeah, so the issue is always performance maximum, maximization. Probably, I guess, the risk 5 core, the Pico risk 5 core, if we read this here as 16 bit, I have the feeling it will most likely do two memory read cycles. Um, so here, performance optimization would be to read the 32 bit and shift this in the register, which probably actually, but anyway, probably I do this later because, yeah, so um, because for this we need to. Um, Actually, well, theoretically, I mean, the worst thing that could happen is that, um, yeah, but the problem is the flash time takes so long. If we make a tiny little mistake, then we need to wait another five minutes just to flash everything again. Um, so maybe we could just cast the pointer and um, yeah, stuff like that. But for, for now, just leave it like it is, even if it's probably slightly less efficient. And read here I plus zero, this is co compiler optimizes the way I usually just keep this here. If I write plus one just to have here documentation of here, this is intentionally left and right. And um, then increment this here by two, or actually we could also remove this here and do I plus plus and I plus plus, maybe potentially depending on how amazing the compiler is more uh, efficient. So the only thing we need now is is a new audio file, which will be slightly annoying because uh, we need to, even we, I takes a moment to load this audio file. So 100,000 lines deleted, 100,000 lines deleted, which also, um, which line is it even? So this is line, yeah, we can delete here some 500,000 lines. 500, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thousand lines deleted. No, oops. Five, zero, 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 zero. Oh, no, it's deleting something. Um, and then 20,000. And so or twenty thousand. Are we even? Yeah, this worked. So, mm. um, how many could this be? Thirty. Gives way too many. Ten. Okay, we probably have probably some fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably there are some better VI commands to delete until the end of something, but.
this was too much. Also too much, so we're coming to an end here with 50 lines. Okay, fine, the rest should probably, yeah, that is the rest. So then we need to generate a new um, from the raw data. How did I do this the last time? Usually I leave this in the comments, but this time I haven't. So uh, generating the data meaning taking our, do I even have still this file around? Um, also probably should use a YouTube RxVT. So this was golden or something. And yes, uh, stay golden, was it stay golden? Um, not sure if it was still golden, maybe. So socks, probably I use socks. Do I still have some comment here of, here I have, ah, here. Some wave, something, so with socks, big endian, channel one, yeah, this looks good. So, oh, socks. Bit 16, um, what was B? Unsigned, wait a second, unsigned, we have signed integer, why do we have, um, what was B, whatever. So channels two, and okay, this radius is also from very old examples, 44, 100, um, that probably should, work or not, um, help effect, oh, maybe also stay golden like that, maybe, um, it's probably we can, I can't play this because we have a net form like that, okay, we could assume that this worked and was correct, usually without YouTube I would test this now, but now I actually could plug out my microphone, so, um, Yeah, up a play CDR channels two of UART two. Oh, we are also capturing from that, I guess. Uh, fun stuff, probably should use pulse audio. Anyway, okay, then we don't test this. Um, however, we will, so the last time, do I still have this in the hex history of X, XXD? Probably, oh, what did I use? Um, ah, here, XXD for formatting this to hex, also now UR2. Um, so this is cutting those fields, and so the, the raw output is uh, that. And so the rest of this is cutting the right fields, like uh, this stuff here, and then with SED translating, in, inserting commas, and uh, then also hex quoting this here with all the four groups of stuff, the fun stuff that you can do on Unix system and usually like on Windows. So UR2, cut the stuff here to X, um, also raw, this comes from. So uh, then of course we need to trim this a little bit because this is way too large. We only have 14 megabyte in the flash left. So this should look like this now. This probably, um, so many zeros. So yeah, a previous video discussing about PCM pulse code, mod, uh, pulse code modulated audio. Um, previous videos there where we discussed one bits. So this is zero and minus one and minus two and stuff. So this file is now large, rather large because it's like five times larger or something for all the hex printable, quoted printable hex numbers there. So dd input file, x output file, x2, um, block size. So actually, we would, it would have been slightly easier to do in before here though. Maybe we actually do this before. So that would be input file, let's do this again, and because this gives us better control how much raw data we want to process. So input file, that output file, standard out, block size 1024, and count, um, count uh, 14 megabytes, so that would be 14 times 
And we have 14 megabyte. We have uh, don't have. Let's use 12 megabyte. A little bit risk five overhead. Uh, multiplied by 24, and then xxd standard in. Probably like that. It might work. Let's see what we have in x or does not work. Yeah. This is why does this not work? Input file, output file, maybe does this not? Does this expand here in the middle? Not sure. No. no, why does this not work? Block size count. Come on. Input file, output file, or maybe or ah, maybe it is so stupid in this treating this. Uh, of course. Uh, by the way, fun trick that you learn another fun trick if you want to delete a file named dash something, then use an relative fast with starting with dot because otherwise it would be an option for RM, right? The fun stuff always people ask me, hey, how do you do this? Like yeah, this is like this obviously, right? Somehow, but yeah. So you are. Um, let's do this again without Z. Uh, also with all the other stuff in between that would be without output file. Yeah, that runs longer. That probably did something. Um, let's see. The size of X is. Yeah, this is super large. Uh, like four or five times larger than raw because pretty printing this to Z. Let's insert this into our firmware, but yeah, not really sure if it makes sense to flash this on live on YouTube unless we, let's see, read X. And um, yeah, even VI needs quite some time. If you have never seen a progress, even VI can print a progress indicator. There's so a large insertion to that. Um, so yeah, that probably could work, then I can enjoy stereo of course the long story short of this you could make this some nice audio video thing um, or other cars home um, whatever you fancy and yeah this kind of course then in the future not in the embedded in the c code but in the future sometime soon don't forget to like and subscribe from the sd card there fun stuff and microkernel file system implementation and all this fun stuff then and um, so yeah, now we can compile this. Let's hope that better works. And so another error we could get is if this is too large, we will get an uh, error message from the linker that this section overflows. Um, but probably I should have timed this with 12 megabytes so precisely that should, should fit. But yeah, this erasing and flashing will take forever. And while we wait for this, we can read some comments. Um, let's see, where did we left off in terms of the comments? Um, system very log stuff. Um, handled some operands, only few bit 32 bit. What you're talking about? So many comments here, which is of course amazing. As usual, leave me in the comments below what you like and dislike, what you uh, like to see and not. Um, So uh, also deck stuff and FIFO, um, SDC. So deck ready from the. So you, so you. You do read deck ready from the risk five. No, we just so we just write, um, and um, it's the risk five core stalls, um, like busy wait cycles until uh, until the deck is signaling ready. So it's wasting a little bit of risk five stuff. So you better do something in between or in the future, either we make the FIFO much larger, like 16 entry FIFO or something, or um, and interrupt driven and direct memory transfer and stuff. But yeah, this is first everything to work and then later we can optimize it, make it more advanced, more efficient. Um, and yeah, this section didn't overflow, so you can watch this erase speed here. Um, and wondering, could latch the data inside the audio block and only update the deck output internally? Yeah, so we, we buffer one, right? So 
Um, this is what this is for. It's buffering. So the FIFO has a depth of one, so it's already buffering one. Um, this is why this, this free thing is for the one entry FIFO there um, and copying, transferring this over into the direct stream digital output pulse with modulation accumulator when um, the next sample is ready. The next sample is to be played at the sample rate of also. Yeah, 44.1. Maybe in the future we should make this configurable so that some homebrew stuff could change the sample rate to 22.05 or um, even 11.0025 or something. Um, FIFO so that you can data more quickly. Yeah, so makes this like 16 entry FIFO, then you only need to do audio sampling every yeah 16 times so often. Uh, that user stuff is top tier voodoo coding uh, to uh, Electron S uh, rewatched a few presentations by Dave Sarge on the way um, and looks like quite interesting to write DSP audio code for the jack DSP GPU stuff so yeah we have so right now of course I'm right now in the FPGA addicted mode um, we soon also will do other stuff so this will not become an FPGA channel but right now not only not in the office but also having fun with this new fancy stuff. Um, so really soon PS3, SJ Octane, uh, all the Unix testing, more systems, more good old fancy uh, um, retro systems, um, not even necessarily expensive uh, Unix workstation stuff. Certainly we need to test them and then also microkernel. Microkernel will also be running on x86. So for my own stuff, I need microkernel stuff really soonish for also x86 projects, not only for this. And um, yeah, running this, planning to have RISC V, uh, not RISC V, pl I'm planning to have basic microkernel stuff running in virtualization in QAM KVM this summer. So uh, my plan is, so I'm taking this seriously, as you probably have guessed from these videos, uh, microkernel running in QAMO of yeah, virtual like you would virtualize your web server QAMO KVM. Um, my plan is to have some basic microkernel and basic user land running in a virtual machine in production for a small web server. So most likely some static web server proof of concept like using your own dog food stuff and um, um, yeah so that is coming also soon for this. We will have PCI code in QA movie. We will have VIRT IO code. We will have all funds of uh, all kinds of fun stuff. And then of course testing it on PowerPC, uh, QAMU, um, PowerPC, MIPSPAR, QAMU and real hardware just because we can. Um, and um, also DSP, I have this self-built uh, sound card there from two decades ago, 20 years ago. And this has a DSP, so I never, because previously when I built it when I was young and in school, it didn't work. I only got it to work like recently. The external deck and DSP as the internal ISA card. So we will also do some testing and fun with that, including hooking up like implementing I2S audio uh, here for this board and hooking this up directly and as PDF. So plenty of videos. We basically have video ideas forever. You only need to share, like and subscribe for all of those. And um, yeah, but microkernel certainly we with all the security vulnerabilities and bugs and stuff, we certainly need something of that sort and more just in time compilation fun and yeah, to risk five and x86 and all the other fun stuff in between. Um, DSP GPU stuff, so comments in the audience. Um, predictable, the same, just a few instructions changed and the mnemonics, um, mnemonics are very similar to 68K. Um, yeah, so we have 56K Motorola, 56K DSP there on, on, on real either card. And um, yeah, for this kind of stuff, of course, you could theoretically even MT32, like Roland MT32, right? Have an 80, what was it, 80, 186 or something embedded CPU and run the original, well, kind of, sort of, not really illegal, but retro stuff. Of course, you can't sell it and redistribute it, but theoretically you could do MT32 on um, this board, for example, um, probably, or something similar, like your own makes this audio stuff more fancy with your own um, strip down. For example, we could 
we could do a size reduce Pico Risk 5 without all the registers, like only 16 of the 32 bit registers, the Pico Risk 5 supports this already. So you could have a dedicated coprocessor like Risk 5 coprocessor for audio DSP, uh, just throwing you some random ideas of all the fun stuff. Um, if you would have endless time and stuff, then yeah, uh, ideas and possibilities are endless. DSP on the Saturn, uh, so more comments in the audience. Handling more operands, bit 32 bit operands, something, so it can be many instructions at once, but really it's more like control state of everything. Welcome everyone. Club Penguin um, started to implement Saturn DSP in system very log, but it's not finished yet. Can someone help me with this Python thing? You can try asking your questions. VDP1 need to exactly how many timing we're forending distorted sprites polygons then implement that very log. Um, Python wasn't too bad pick up though, was quite C like. It was indeed one of John's videos, Saturn. So it is. Um, figured out quite a lot about basic address decoding. Buses finished. People, so Mr. Bong 500 finished his sub ASM editor. Interesting, Saturn does use full 32 bit bus to the CPU, but 16 bit to the VDPs, 8 bit to the sound chip. Yes, it sounds like that makes sense. Similar to us, we also have the peripherals often, as you've seen even in the beginning of this video, ignoring half of the bus for read and write because cursor address. Um, for example, 24, like video palette only using 24 bit of the bus and audio 16 bit and so on. Um, Christian doesn't understand how many language structure Python unfortunately have. Check code examples, ping, you know, and Saturn doesn't DMAC something, Super H2 chip at all, DMAC in the something. So, what else do we have? The VRAM, Saturn. Also needs transference for infinite amount of RAM to VRAM. 16 bus was enough. VRAM works like Sega export. Okay, people discussing all the internal Sega. Um, yeah, something of that sort. So uh, very theoretically, uh, if you want to do this, um, I said it before, I will most likely focus on new and modern stuff and yeah, microkernel, even KVM, virtio. Um, but yeah, it's nothing limiting from doing this um, if you wanted to. Uh, Someone knows this jumpy quite a look. Um, I really hate when this YouTube chat jumps around here. Cycle through the commands, very, very large resim setup. Uh, you, also, this is why you don't want audio data. You see the flashing time there. You don't want audio data in your C code. Not only is this file not nice to edit with your editor being 80 megabyte large um, or something of that sort, but flashing takes forever. This is why ASAP probably next week we need to implement SD card so that we can have our audio file. Also, what would be curious would, would be to see if we can get MP3 decoding running on this speed of an RISC-V CPU, 40 to 50 megahertz um, MP3 or at least flag for lossless audio decoding coming soon here. Um, still waiting for the days when FPGA based N64 is conceived. Trust me, it's being worked on, it takes a while longer, it will happen. Microkernel sounds like a really small KFC, might be buffering the rights. Um, so if you uh, if you at the deck we buffer one right right so buffer one right if you and then depending on if you only write once you have no um, I O uh, wait if you write very fast then you have I O wait in synchron synchronized with the sampling frequency um, text and detail parsers are tricky to write done write Q files. Sucks assembly, easier to make it ignore all the spaces first. What sucks, sucks is a Cisc based CPU. Um, so, yeah, what else do we have here? How are 60, 40, 56 KDSPs coding wise? I love witchcraft of this. Yeah, so as this were like 
Uh, yeah, DSP coding, this, this was fun. Um, and what else do we have here? I really hate when this stupid YouTube chat jumps. How much? Yeah, fl flashing 87%. Um, while we read through the comments, 60 like instructions, risk like Mac, Mac instructions. Seems like where are we? 68 like. Um, wavetable medicine. I want so Electron has also wanted to write a wavetable medicine at some point. DSP is all the way directly. So the question is um, for the FM operators. Yeah, it's completed in 700. So this are probably more than this is more than 10 minutes flashing. If this is accurate, not really sure that would be. Anyway, I told you it would be long. I better hope it works at the first try. Um, but um, yeah, I wonder where it is the most efficient. So sign interpolation, but well, sign interpolation FPGA is nice to have anyway, independently of our audio stuff. And now we have synthesized this and yeah, theoretically best practice formal verifies this and simulates this. Um, so or why are we stuck in press enter to continue? That was back to some old bug. Don't tell me we reintroduced here some stupid bug though. All the flashing for nothing live on YouTube. Now oh, wait a second, we don't want to edit this in this one. Um, so firmware C, or not firmware C, that would be ULX3X. Don't tell me we made here some ULX3S. Um, also camera battery coming to an end probably. Um, so we last but not least have done here some GPIO thing with LEDs. Don't tell me we made here some last minute edit R. Darn. I think I uncommented it wrong so much too. Yeah, this is exactly the wrong, the, the hang. So the good thing is this is only in the very log. Um, I hope I, what was the other thing I deleted? Not that I have here another. Um, so the good thing is this time I shouldn't make, so this flashing is fast because we can directly load it in the, into the FPGA memory, the bitstream. So just we should not make another typo here for the flash again. This would be um, this flash and then only, so yeah, also the synthesis will take um, a minute or two, but yeah, so then you have seen this live on YouTube, this mentioned in the beginning of the live stream LED. Um, reading not supported, so then this hangs there uh, as shown previously on. I can also show you the Pico sock, Pico sock, and then the um, firmware C4 um, LED something um, prompt or get char, or that would be here of reading the. LEDs to XOR them or invert them. And um, yeah, hanging there a second time, just as I promised you, just it wasn't even my intention to do, do it like this, but here we are. Um, so let's see, MIP syntax is reminiscent of PowerPC with also wiredness, weirdness. Um, also here, time for dinner. At least then you have seen here some real world um, bug and feature and reflashing. Let's only hope this time we do not clobber this um, this uh, wrong flash memory again. That would be painful to flash this again for 760 seconds. Um, so people still discuss the discuss DSP. So yeah, my thought was sign table would be nice to have an example implementation for this anyway. Not yet sure. I wonder how they have done this in the OPL in the 80s. Um, sounds, I think the OPL 2 and 3 and, and stuff they were even, or uh, OPL 1, they might have been even using some fancy form of floating point. I think I read the even the output is some floating point output to the deck. 
Um, so yeah, really fancy stuff. And um, yeah, it would be really in interesting to know what kind of tricks. So decapping and, and electron microscope tracing, this would certainly be, I wonder if someone has done this already. Probably someone has, but yeah. Um, it's good when the op opcodes are compact and the same length. Yeah, so this is why RISC V, certainly pretty amazing power PC is really a little bit annoying. This is also just today on Foronix that is discussion of um, power PC. Yeah, so now we have more than two times enter stuff and let's see if we have this in stereo now. And we have just that I only have a mono microphone, but it's still outputting something with the modified with the modified firmware for stereo here live on YouTube and two instances or two open coded puts with modulated stuff. So building our own iPod kind of music player there for your car. Home stereo and other laptop goodness stuff. So yeah, how to make your FPGA amazing stereo? And um, yeah, for the the next improvement would be so not only parameters to optionally enable this for the RX32 dot big and not the little icebreaker, but next would also be to have um, here I mentioned this already to make this FM operators stereo. Um, I said this already, we have here a really fine grained volume control and I would simply um, make this so that we have 16-bit volume registers and realistically we don't really need 16-bit volume for the FM operator. So I would make them 8-bit, that probably should be enough um, volume scaling for the FM operators and have them 8-bit left and 8-bit right and um, yeah, on the RX32 dot little system there would just be no operation and uh, on the RX32 reference system here um, on, on the dot big system on this UX3S it would be left in stereo so you could have kind of stereo panning and whatnot fancy um, game music for even like space shooters like lasers coming from left and right and all the amazing um, kind of audio orientation goodness. That's it for today. I hope you learned something um, basically so except features um, making this with one source code a little bit parameters as I mentioned and then SD card and keyboard audio on the RX32 big system even USB sometime soon in a month or so otherwise PS2 keyboard and mouse for RX32 little on the icebreaker and the last thing right now I still have here from the most minimal example from upstream um, I still have here um, ULX3S and I so this is like quite identical after getting everything to work and testing and so on the biggest thing is to clean this up so that we really reuse the PicoSoc instance. So right now this is still this AtoSoc here of uh, this upstream Radiana example. But yeah, a little bit of code moving around, not the most motivated because so much can easily go wrong. But um, this is the last step and then yeah, whatever features we fancy. As usual, vote down below in the comments there. Give it a thumbs up if you learn something and otherwise Leave in the comments below what you like and dislike, what you like to see, learn and stuff. Um, MP3 would be cool given how inefficient 46 was, it sounds feasible. Um, yeah, the 486 was not that inefficient. So right now also another day um, I heard people already working on the next amazing RISC-V course. So new RISC-V course coming here also to this channel. Um, right now this RISC-V is not the super most efficient especially when running from SPI, even from quad mode, it's probably four clock cycles to fetch an instruction or something. But um, would interestingly, so we probably would, run, would want to run this from SD. Also, yeah, actually we need to do also SD RAM memory controller. So plenty of stuff to come, but probably next week, a couple of other videos, not to overload you with only FPGA addiction galore. And 
Um, otherwise, yeah, still a lot to, to do and MP3 yeah, should be possible with plenty of the optimizations. We will see 486 wasn't too bad, um, but it gives us at least a ch chance to totally optimize the heck out of our RISC-V. So basically, if it's too slow, then we need to optimize our hardware more and um, yeah, amaz more amazing RISC-V core or some DSP-like instructions. We will see why not some custom RISC-V assembly instruction optimization goodness. We will see whatever we um, feel like it and you vote and share, like and subscribe. Probably uh, reading the last um, comments here. Uh, Electron S really likes MIPS. Yeah, MIPS, RISC-V and MIPS are pretty similar. Um, it's a little bit differently. Previous video uh, here on my channel, RISC-V ISA. It's relatively close and I have to say I, I think I like RISC five and MIPS much more than PowerPC, for example. Just today the discussion on Pharonix, PowerPC opens like, yeah, whatever, too little, too late. Also, either a little bit in air, a little bit too convoluted, whatever. Also, why when we have RISC-V, totally new from scratch, nicely sorted, um, even compressed instructions said, why do we need PowerPC? Obviously we don't. Um, so yeah, in my opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, we will see in a decade, RISC-V is there to stay and dominate the CPU landscape for the decades to come until people invent something like forward come from Icon or something. But um, yeah, um, um, how much faster Ryzen? Uh, I'd really love to know how much faster Ryzen can compile Mr. Cores. Um, maybe not much. Um, I've seen this um, a lot of. FPGA synthesis stuff usually single threaded. So um, unless you, I'm not sure if you can do this, um, leave me in the comments below if you can like synthesize five modules and then later combine them. But if you can't, then for me, um, yeah, but maybe this is already possible. I need to research this, but you would need to synthesize all the modules like USB, graphics, sound individually. Um, not really sure if, yeah, leave me in the comments below. But otherwise, if it's single-threaded, then not the most um, faster th the threading-wise. Um, blindness never noticed what I'm calling. It's a switch just flip. What are you talking about? Um, ethics something also. Yeah, YouTube commands just jumped around. Uh, Genesis style background crawling. So quite some... So what else do we have to say? X86 instruction set is ridiculous. Yes, uh, totally, probably everyone will agree to this. Um, Mr. Bonk working on graphic-oriented extensions to his GF sucks. Watched presentation recently, about 80% was reading out the different instructions. What, of who? Watched the presentation recently and what, uh, talking about x86. Hmm. Supposed to play on GFX, should call 680 sucks, uh, something, 486 calls Mr. Uh, AO46 core, Mr. has a nice OPL core, quite accurate. Yeah, I, I saw this probably, I didn't take a closer look because we didn't have so many 10,000 um, logic elements to spare. Maybe I take a look. Um, thanks for that. Um, Yamaha yeah, FM chip stored one quarter sine wave an on-chip ROM, yeah, something like that probably you, you need to do, obviously, um, similar to multiplication tables in, in pentiums and other sine tables, obviously, in floating point processes. Similar to old school wheel chips, um, single bit reverse ROM, uh, what else do we have there? Sprite support by scanline. Genesis style scrolling background 20 foot something. Um, so yeah, the nice thing is, of course, this I, what I try to do, of course, there are other examples, many of which are often complicated. So what I try to do here with this RX32, not only um, trying to beat the Commander X16 before, because I find using this old style comp components in 2020 a little bit hilarious. So not only 
beating this arcade stuff at this game in modern FPGA stuff. Also because the 8-bit guy specifically mentioned he did not want to do FPGA 4 exactly, specifically avoiding people tinkering and reprogramming. And yeah, tinkering and reprogramming is exactly what we're here for. That's why I think this is much more future-proof future, future proof and amazing to work with, much more to learn and, and do modern hardware and not be stuck with old integrated circuits. And there are other video calls, but I want to have most readable examples um, for people to get started and learn something and stuff. Although maybe later we do sprites, we will see. Maybe we, I, I probably, yeah, so later, I said this before, I will try to do 2D acceleration like BitBLT, copy maybe even with alpha on the ULX33S and um, most likely, depending on how many logic elements we have, I will maybe in a month or a year, eventually I will try to do a Verge Voodoo kind of 3D texturing or shading and texturing, maybe we, we will see, just for the sake of it, why not? And then we create our repository of examples and stuff to reuse. Um, retro game graphics back with gave them a certain style. Yeah, with this constraints, totally agree. I find many of these old games even more interesting and more stylish than a lot of modern stuff and uh, probably something for another video. And um, totally agree with this. 16-bit alpha channel, something, 8-bit index color, even grayscale. Some questions about set it with color, 8-bit. I just arrived, so colors is just arrived and have some questions about set it with color. The 8-bit color are used for what? So uh, on 32 bit color, the alpha is used for transparency. So with, uh, with our code right now, we have only RGB fully filled and uh, the alpha channel is used for transparency. So if, so either like FF, like all bit set is fully solid and then, or the other way around, depending how you want it. And then um, it's blended over it, blending, blending meaning multiplied over it so that you can have stuff semi-transparent um, here of uh, that kind of fun, um, like here. Um, so the alpha channel is like basically on this picture. Here would be, this is also from RGB color model, model and on Wikipedia here exactly, um, here fully solid and here like here zero, alpha zero, for example, or the vice versa. And this allowing this kind of transparency effects um, for, yeah, also, also previously in the 80s, transparency stuff was usually one bit, like on sprites, one bit transparency, so no blending, either there was something or there wasn't, and with an alpha channel with more than one bit, like two, four, eight bits, or whatever, then between gives you this kind of semi-transparency if you multiply this for blending it over some background. Um, Electro -ish. Yeah, also in the future, maybe we try also other CPU cores, so the possibilities are endless. And um, what is so nice with this FPGA stuff in contrast to real hardware, like real hard silicon from the 8-bit guys CX16, is that here we can switch and match and match. We can uh, hook in there in 486 FPGA design um, and, and PowerPC or MIPS or Spark, there's even open source Spark, right? Um, plug in there your, your CPU model, synthesize it, of course, a little bit bus logic and whatever is needed there, and your firmware, of course. But um, yeah, so many, many comments. Okay, uh, Mr. Bong thinks it will, he will take over because his sucks is so much more efficient. So what else do we have here? GitHub, GitLab, uh, Pico RV, so that is there. Do you have some code examples for that? Um, probably for the alpha, but you find this alpha blending when you Google for it, or we do another video. Um, Sign thought he was asking about uh, something. Um, are we done alpha mixing stuff in? Are only really done? Um, so yeah, bit BLT, so we will do some graphic acceleration and um, so on. Uh, Electron Ash is typing some 8-bit wire for RGB palette. 
multiplied with alpha divided by it, uh, 255. Yeah, probably you want to shift that. Um, usually saves you some logic elements. And um, open spark. Yeah, so there's also not only open spark, there's also a Leon, I think, some um, spark from European Space Agency or companies and people surrounding that. Um, Ported to Mister already could pinch in the CPU. Uh, yeah, so that's it for today. Amazing that so 111 people already tuned in. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to select and subscribe. I hope you enjoy this and learn something. And probably you need to do some IT and security long overdue live stream on the More Life channel. Recurring reminder: we have this main and the other More Life channel. I got some 16-bit stereo CD quality stuff to listen to and I hope to see you soon for all the next videos and live streams to come.